I think non-alignment was a very creative response to a brand new situation when the world was divided into two blocks, uh, when the Cold War was beginning. And it was a creative response when our capabilities were so limited. And yet it took a lot of courage to decide not to align with either bloc, which would have been the easy choice, uh, and to stand on our own feet. We had fought for our independence, gained it, and now we were going to run our own lives. And so the idea, the core idea, that we will decide on issues based on our appreciation of how it affects our interests. I think that was a very sound and good idea and a very good basis for the future development of Indian foreign policy. I think it worked very well when both blocs actually uh, were antagonistic, but also had space between them within which uh, non-aligned countries could maneuver. And it's a measure of, of how not just uh, good, but practical that idea was that if you look at the early non-aligned meetings or look at Bandung, for instance, many of the aligned countries chose to come to these meetings, Japan, uh, you know, countries, Turkey, countries that were aligned with the West or with the East, with the Soviets. Uh, I think non-alignment lost some of its uh, purpose when the nature of the international system changed. You know, once it became, uh, once the US brought China in on her side, the Cold War lines in Asia, at least, were no longer quite so clear. And if you look at issues like Afghanistan in the 80s, the war against the Soviets in Afghanistan, you look at Kampuchea, Vietnam, uh, these were much more complicated sort of affairs. And and secondly, the non-line, once they had succeeded to a considerable extent on issues like uh, decolonization, ultimately even on anti-apartheid and racism, uh, when they shifted their attention to the global economic order, new, new international economic order is what they were working for in the 70s, 80s, then they were attacking the very core of the power of the established countries. And there naturally they were up against, you know, the masked power of the countries who controlled, well, 60% of world GDP in 1980. So uh, that was a much more difficult and frankly, it was an effort which failed uh, and was soon overtaken by globalization and the other forces which technology let loose. Uh, and once that happened, I think, uh, and with the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1890, uh, there was nobody to be non-aligned from or to. So countries started following a, a multi-directional policy, but the core of non-alignment, I think, remained in strategic autonomy, a phrase that Mr. Vajpayee used to use. And I think that as a guiding principle for Indian policy, at least, remains. And so I would trace that back to non-alignment. Non-alignment might have been contingent on that situation, but the core idea, I think, is still valid for India because ultimately nobody else will share your interests 100%. Nobody else shares your geography, your location, your stage of development, et cetera or your resource endowment. So the basic drivers mean that you will, of foreign policy mean that you will have certain interests which are aligned with others. You will have other interests which may be aligned with another set of countries. So given that non-alignment or strategic autonomy, the ability to choose, I think is, is the right way forward.